All right, folks, welcome to Module 3, Lesson 1, Space Control Overview. And in this lesson, we are going to be talking about a lot of fundamental concepts that you're going to need through the rest of this module. So you're really going to want to pay attention because I'm not going to discuss these concepts in detail after this lesson. I'm going to assume that you understand them as we move through the other lessons. All right. So space control comes down to a couple variables. And so what I want you to do real quick is I want you to think, what are the most important variables in space control? And you should know what variables are from the building automation fundamentals course or just from a BAS knowledge. But just to recap, variables are those set points or those values that you control to to maintain an environment so i just gave you several hints so what do you think the most important variables in space control would be well this may surprise some of you but they are quite simply airflow and airflow is the first variable without airflow nothing else matters and the second is temperature now you may say but if it's too hot or too cold in the space folks can't be in it well yes that's true but without airflow you have no way of cooling or heating that space so airflow is paramount so i want you to remember this whenever you're troubleshooting a system whatever you're working on a system airflow first temperature second all right so let's talk about airflow what is airflow so airflow is quite simply the movement of air right i mean it's air is flowing or it's not flowing and in the air handling and rooftop unit, we're going to talk through what is producing airflow. We're going to talk through VFDs and pressure control. So you won't see a lot of that here, but we're going to talk about the space aspects of airflow. So in space control, as I've said, airflow is everything. And it's important because it changes the environment of the room. Temperature, humidity, CO2. All of these things are important, but none of them can be changed without airflow. For example, temperature. If you need to go and change the temperature, you can introduce cold or hot air. If you need to adjust the humidity, you can introduce air that's more humid or less humid. And CO2, that's all airflow, right? That's about bringing in more fresh, quote, unquote, outdoor air to reduce the volume of CO2 in a space. So how do we control airflow? because this is the VAV slash room control module, so that's probably our main focus here, right? I mean, it should be. I said it's our main focus in the beginning of this lesson. So we control airflow two ways. And these, these are the two ways you control airflow. Everything else is secondary to this. So if you simply understand that you can change the supply or you can change the exhaust, and that will change airflow. If you understand those, then you will understand the two things you need to look at when designing, troubleshooting, programming, installing, it all comes down to these two things. Now, either one of these is going to affect concepts called air changes and space pressure. And we'll talk about those a little bit later, but first let's focus on the supply and exhaust. So I want you to look at these two diffusers. One of these is a supply diffuser. One of these is an exhaust diffuser. And I wonder if you can guess which one's which. It's actually quite hard to tell at first glance. And quite honestly, you could go and argue that one of these is not a supply and one of these is not an exhaust. And unless you knew where these were coming from, you could be right. But quite simply, this is the supply right here, and this is the exhaust. The exhaust, you can see, has no constriction, and you can see a little bit of constriction behind the diffuser here that's used for going and doing a balancing offset of the airflow that's coming in, or it could be used simply just a duct connection. I don't know what's above that diffuser, but I could tell you that having seen this con diffusers before this is most likely going and affecting the direction of the airflow that's coming out 
and this is a omnidirection. You can see it coming out there. So this is most likely a supply diffuser. So there's a lot of variables that could be going on here. And I know for a fact this is a supply diffuser because I took a picture of it. But with that being said, that's how I was think through if this was a supply or exhaust. That doesn't really matter though. I just wanted to put that in there to kind of give you guys a view of what supply and exhaust diffusers look like and how they can look very similar and how you shouldn't use them to determine things. But what you should do is you should understand that airflow entering the space through a diffuser is called supply air. And airflow leaving the space through a diffuser is called exhaust air. Now it may simply be returning to the air handler, it may be actually exhausting to the outside. Doesn't really matter, it's still called exhaust air. All right, so supply and exhaust are your two most important variables and you can control them using two main mechanisms. And those mechanisms are volumetric matching and volumetric offset. Yes, there are other ways to control supply and exhaust, but in most sequences, in most designs, this is what you're gonna find. You're gonna find that you're going and doing volumetric matching, which is you're matching the amount of airflow volume in and the amount of airflow volume going out. Why would you do this? This is often done in units where you want to ensure that you've got a specific amount of airflow going in and leaving the space. And this is typically done when you want to go and make sure that you're changing the volume of air in a certain amount of time. Now volumetric offset, this is done more in a pressure scenario. So you provide a difference between volume going in and out and the volume going out. Typically the volume going in is more then the volume going out, which air has volume, it has mass, which then means that air going into that space starts to pressurize that space. And that's how you create a positive pressure environment. You would want to use a positive pressure environment in spaces where you don't want things to come in. Like operating rooms are typically positively pressured so you don't get contaminants coming in. You can also, on the flip, you can go on the flip side, I'm like on the flip on the flip side you can go and have supply lower than exhaust and that creates a negative scenario where you're pulling air from outside spaces in because you're exhausting more air than you're supplying in and that air's got to come from somewhere that would be somewhere like an infectious environment or somewhere where you don't want something in that space to leave and go to other spaces so volumetric matching and volumetric offset it's important to understand those two concepts now the last thing I'm going to leave you with in this very short lesson is how do we control temperature? Now we'll cover this a little bit in the different VAV lessons, the ones on cooling only, reheat boxes, etc. But in most cases you're going to be controlling temperature at the air handler. That's where you're going to make your biggest temperature change and you're going to be controlling most likely to somewhere between 55 to 65 degree discharge. And the reason for that is typically at 55 degrees, that's where you hit full saturation. That means you cool the air down, it gets fully saturated with humidity, and then as it warms back up in the space, it warms up at a lower humidity level. And that's how you control humidity. That's typically why we do 55 degrees. Now, when you're trying to control temperature, you can do it one of three ways. You can introduce more cold air, that's usually cooling only boxes or even reheat boxes. You can reheat the air at the VAV using some form of reheat coil or maybe mixing in plenum air using a parallel fan setup. And you can also use a space heat source like a radiator, fin tube radiator, things like that. So those are your three main ways of heating and cooling spaces you're gonna see that space control is actually quite simple. There's those two main concepts that if you grasp them around airflow and temperature, learning how to interpret control sequences for these spaces is gonna be relatively simple. So with that, we're gonna dive into lesson two where we are going to unpack a cooling only VAV. And I will see you in that lesson. Thanks a ton, take care.